Now, just like with any time we're working with any sort of an electrical project, we wanna make sure the power is off to this fan. To do that, I'm gonna leave the lights on for now. I'll go flip it off, make sure they turn off. Then I'll come back in, flip the lights off and on just to double check, and then I'll even use a circuit tester to make sure once we've got the wires exposed. With the power off, we can now remove this canopy cover to expose the wiring and the brackets underneath. Now that the wires are exposed, we can go ahead and get everything disconnected. Now, if you have a traditional ceiling fan set up, you're often gonna have four wires here. You're gonna have a black, which is a, a live or a hot. And then you're also gonna have a green, which is a ground, a white, which is the neutral. And then you're gonna have this travel wire here, which is often red from the ceiling and blue in the ceiling fan. And that's what helps control the fan and the lights separately. So we'll disconnect each of these. And for now, I'm gonna still be careful not to let them touch each other. Now I'm just gonna use this inexpensive little circuit tester here just to make sure that there is no power going through these and it will light up if there is any power. So nothing there. And I'm doing this on the black and white, on the basically the hot and the neutral. Nothing there either. Okay, so we're all set, the power's off. I verified that at the light switch, so now we can pull these apart and get ready to take the fan down. So the ceiling fan we're replacing the old one with is this Inlight 52 inch fan. And inside the box here we have our blades. We'll take those out. And we have our light assembly here. We've got some parts that go up top. So this particular fan actually comes with a switch that handles in one block, one single gang here, the light switch as well as the fan speed. So it's all packed into one thing and it works with any Decora light switch. Now this is a good time to actually check to see if the new bracket that comes with the new fan is compatible with the old one. If it is, save yourself some time and leave that up there. But one thing to check is the actual threads of the screws that go in on the sides. In this case, these two look really similar, but they're not actually compatible. So I'm gonna have to take this one out and put the new one from the new kit in. Okay. And they're really good now, and we can proceed with the setup for the fan down on the ground. Now every ceiling fan is going to be a little bit different, but the concepts are the same. Basically you have your top piece up here, and then you wanna make sure that the ball mount is sitting inside of that, like so. And then you usually have some sort of a cover or a flange here. This has a little rubber gasket on the inside that will slide right up the rod extension. It's called a down rod. So then um, once we've got these three put together like so, we're gonna take all of the wires that come inside here, and we're gonna pull these all out and then feed them through the bottom of this piece here, through the down rod. Um, if it's not going through, like seems to be the case for me, I'm just gonna pop this off. You can loosen this one screw here, take this down, and then this rod can pop out. That'll make it easier to uh, push the wires through. Yep, they're all right there. So once you've got all of those through, um, there's two screws on the top here, and you wanna make sure to loosen those. Uh, also, I've got this cable, and this is optional. This is a security fallback, essentially. So you can feed that through, but you can see with how long mine's gonna be, I don't know that it's worth doing. So I'm actually just gonna feed that in there and then not worry about it from there. So basically, we're gonna now feed this through and keep an eye on the holes that go through on either side. We wanna match those up with the holes down here on the base. We'll use the rod that we pulled out of this thing earlier and feed that right through. And you're gonna have to probably move it around a little bit to get it through, uh, past the wires in there. We'll put our cotter pin in, the clevis or clevis pin. Now, if you're not using a down rod, you can actually bypass all of this and you can remove all of these screws here temporarily 
and then put this whole canopy cover down right up against the motor mount and fasten the screws back in. If you're using the shorter down rod that comes with it, like this one, then you can do the same process just with that, or with the longer one, you can do it this way. So then I can slide that over. That covers everything up, keeps the dust out, and takes care of that. And then all we have left to do at this point is to put this back together. I'm gonna to put the pin back in, slide it up to where it needs to be, and then tighten the screw up again. All right, from here, we can take the new assembly and basically set this hemisphere or this ball right up into the mount. And then there's a little groove cut in it and that usually goes towards the back and it will just kind of sit in there like that so it can't twist anymore. That means we've got it in the right spot. From there, we're just going to connect all of the wires just like we had before. We're gonna put the black to the black, the white to the white, the blue to the red, and the green to the ground. All right, once we've got all of these in place, we can, there we go. We're gonna tuck all of this back up inside the junction box in the ceiling. Just get this all kind of back out of the way. Now, if your ceiling fan uses a remote control, typically you're gonna have it mounted inside here. And so this is the time when you hook that up and stuff that in. This one actually has all of the, the mounts, or excuse me, all of the controls on the control panel on the wall, on the light switch. So that works out really nice. So that's all in place. Next, we can take our canopy cover, make sure it's aligned on both sides. There we go, fasten that. And we fasten each screw, and then we're gonna put the replacement screw that we took out earlier from the other holes and put those in as well. Now, while we've got the wiring all set, the canopy in place, and the motor is securely suspended from the ceiling, we don't have the fan blades on yet and we don't have the lights on. So before we get to that point, we're gonna head over to our light switch. We're gonna wire everything up there and do a quick test, make sure everything works, and then we'll put the rest together. Now, if you have an existing ceiling fan, there's a good chance that you might have a couple of switches, one for your light and one for your fan. And that's what we have here. This one on the left controls the light fixture. This one controls the ceiling fan itself and the spinning of the blades. And I'm not gonna worry too much about the actual speed at which these are going. So in my case, I wanna keep these smart. So I'm just gonna leave these in place. Now, if you wanna control everything right here from the wall, this in-light package actually comes with a wall control switch that controls the lights separately from the fan, and it has all three settings for the fan speed right here on the panel, which is really nice. This fits any traditional Decora light plate, which is great, and there's only a few wires to hook up. We're gonna completely ignore all the neutrals, the white wires that are back in here, and we're gonna ignore the ground or the greens that are back in there, or the bare copper wire. We're really only dealing with two things. One is the red traveler wire that comes down and that's gonna to connect to your blue. The other ones are your blacks. Those are line, load, or hot. There's all kinds of names for them. But basically you've got some that are coming in and providing power, and those ones connect to the black and white wire on your panel here. And it says LAC, that stands for line AC coming in. That connects there. The other one is the black wire that's going up to your fixture. And that one, just like it says here, two motor L for line or load. So we've got the, the line or load going out there, we've got the power coming in here, and then we've got the on off essentially for the light fixture itself, just the lights. And that's pretty much all there is to that. It can be a little confusing, and if you do have questions, you may wanna contact an electrician if it's not working or not making sense. Next, we're gonna to put together our fan blades. We're gonna do some pre-assembly down on the ground, and keep in mind that most fan blades are two-sided, so you can choose the look that you want facing down. So in this case, we've got more of a closed grain and then we've got kind of a split grain over here. Next up, we're going to install the fan blades themselves. And there are these little temporaries in here, these little spacers. So we're gonna remove those and the next one too. With the fan blades attached, we can now take these three screws out here. This is what holds the light fixture in place. Now we're ready to put the light fixture in and there's just a little connection right here. We'll put these two together. I wanna make sure I got these facing the right way like so. They'll clip in and with that, we've got power. I'm just now going to take 
this little piece here. So I'm just gonna feed it down into the light. Then we're gonna line up the three screws that we just removed. And grab one of these and get it started. Okay, there's one and three. And we've just got a couple of screws to hold on for this cage here. And the last step is to place our globe in place. And this one just slides in and then threads locks. There we go. All right, looking good. Now one feature that's probably underutilized in a lot of fans, this one does come with a reverse switch right up here. So in the summer, you use it as you traditionally would. The wind blows down on you, it feels really nice. In the winter, you can flip that switch, have it go in reverse direction, and then it will pull the cool air away from you. So that's definitely something to keep in mind. You can flip that switch in the spring and in the fall, and it'll make it so this fan is useful all year round. All right, let's test it out. First, we'll start with the light. There we go, looks great. And the fan. Awesome, and then we got the fan and the light working, and we are in good shape. Now, as you probably noticed, in one room, we went ahead and used the wall control panel where we can do everything right from here. And in this room, we kept the smart switches that we had in there already. But with the ceiling fan upgraded, we have everything controlled by the smart switches at this point. So I can use my phone like this and turn on the lights. I can also turn on the fan. Great room, ceiling fan. There it is. And get that turned on. I can also use my voice to do that, which is super convenient. Either way, not having to deal with those pole chains is a definite win. So a huge thank you to Inlight for sponsoring today's video. We've got links to these fans down in the description below if you want to check those out. You can order them direct from Amazon, have them shipped right to your house, and now you've seen exactly how you can replace your old ceiling fans with new ones. If you want to learn more about how you can actually install these smart switches, whether it's a single pole or a three-way, I've got a list right here you can check out to learn how to do that. I'm Nils with Learn to DIY. Thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next one.